Hey, muy buenas tardes to everyone. I hope everybody's doing well, staying blessed, and enjoying family as always. Also, thank you, Tony, again for allowing me to get on your platform. Stories written by a current prisoner to share my stories. Now, before I continue sharing my story, I want to make sure I let everybody know that in no shape or form, by me telling you guys this episode of my of my story am i inputting that i'm proud or uh, in any way am i glorifying what i did now i do understand if everybody starts thinking of me you know like a scandalous person or in any negative way towards me i completely understand this action I did was uh, was never supposed to happen. I should have never been part of, you know, I knew it was wrong. But, you know, again, I was at a stage of my life that, you know, to be sincere, I didn't have the backbone to, to even question what I was being said to do. So please, again, don't, don't mistake my words or me wanting to keep it honest with everyone to where I'm trying I'm acting like if I'm proud of this because I'm not okay for this story I'm gonna go back continuing where I had left off I had already shared with you guys you know from when I was fighting cancer and uh, I ran up in the bulldog cell and I had stabbed them and how they were trying to take me out to court you know and at first it was like they offered me they offered me three years with another strike uh, as a deal you know and at first i was like nah hell no you know make them you know fight it fight it all the way and have them spend as much as possible give them headaches you know i know it sounds ignorant but it, it's where my mind mind was at, you know. I was angry with with everybody, you know. And well, at least I thought I was angry. I was mad at everybody, but I wasn't, you know. I was uh, latching out, but it was towards myself. But anyways, I I went out again to court in regards to 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 you know the the manufactured weapon they had found because they didn't they couldn't really pin me on a, on stabbing homeboy it was just the weapon that i couldn't flush so when i went out uh there was a big surprise you know that my lawyer came up and he told look you gotta take this deal you know another strike in the three years and I told him why and he told me that they had they had violated the rulings of the courts when it came to my my sentencing for example yes yeah, they had sentenced me to to serve two life sentence but I was 17 years old I was to go up I was supposed to go up and serve a life sentence NYA which was till I was 25 and then I was to be moved to CDC and serve another life sentence without as an adult now so he basically told me you know that we had actions on, on fighting my uh, you know my sentencing under under them violating what the judge had ordered So we did it like that, you know. I took I took the three years with another strike, and we went back. Well, I went back, and the lawyer did his thing, and he he put the proper paperwork, you know, to appeal this this new action, and uh, we we did the waiting game as you do when you're in prison. Now, as we're waiting. As we're waiting, as as I stated, you know, had a celly that he was a main member. 
I already I already put out his name out there, you know. I don't want to I don't want to be touching on his name and too much for I just feel that ain't right, you know. I hope you guys understand. But anyways, I was sold up with this person for for about eight months, you know, and uh, he was an older Lato, but he, he was a uh, he was a real cool person, you know. He basi we basically we got along real cool, you know. I went. He was part of my phase, you know, going through cancer. He seen, you know, how how I was. Uh, I'm not gonna say, you know, that I was a stupid ass, you know, because uh, he used to tell me all the time, you know, you know what, fool, you you could actually, you don't have to be acting the way you do, you know, running up in people's cells or or even be obligated to go out to yard and still call that rutina and uh, call, call that rutina in the pie, you know, when uh, you're going through all this. He actually got to see how, you know, due to the, the cancer spraying, uh, they had to move so fast. So when they put the the portal path on my chest, they, uh, they had to leave the hole sticking out so I could start chemo right away. And you know, he he lived it. You know, for more for as much as I I tried hiding it from him, what I was going through, he still you were able to see it. You know, it wasn't like for those that gone through something like this, man. You know, chemotherapy is a B. Man, I have never felt that much pain in my life. You know. And even though, you know, I was receiving, uh, you know, super strength bike getting four times a day, I shot a steroids, you know, Advil 3s for pain, and it was still intolerable, you know. I couldn't take it at times. But anyways, you know, once I did that, they uh, basically... You know, God was good with me in that aspect that uh, before I finished chemo, you, you couldn't see traces of of the cancer no more. You know, and uh, so I settled down. I and uh, I gotta say, you know, when I was going through all that cancer stuff, uh, you know, my Sally's uh, family was they were Christian, so they were real good people. You know. And uh, he put me in touch with his jefita, his carnalas, and uh, you know, they used to come visit me. They used to be real supportive, uh, and it, it was things that that had nothing to do, you know, with the, the movement or, or, you know, the thing we were doing, it was beyond that, you know. So, Here's where, where it jumps off from uh, from everything being cool on how you're in prison and things can change from one moment to the next, especially when you're falling suit under, a, you know, under a power hungry tecato, you know, you know, for those that are aware of addiction, man, you know, from one moment everything could be cool and the next moment is and all hell broke loose, it's just how addiction works, you know. So anyways, you know my celly, he had been made for for a long time, you know, but uh, in reality there was a, uh, there was too many things going on in his personal life, which uh, I don't want to get into, you know, into it because uh, I just don't, you know, I don't want to touch on his personal life that I knew or I was aware of. So he started distancing himself in that aspect where uh, he, he started uh, stressing, you know. That's the correct word, you know, stressing and wasn't able to basically 
be more into what he was supposed to be doing in the in the sense of the gang so one day you know he went out to medical and uh you know i got i got called by the pili you know already and he told me hey uh i'm gonna shoot my line i got i got uh and i'm a pill you know i want you to pull that in and when you're done reading it tie it back up and let me pull it back over here so i did i pulled it in and then in this on my pill he was uh Ari was telling me basically that you know that basically the old man in the cell with me had a was just taking space he was not no more not producing no more for the organization and uh, he wanted me to take care of it you know that we just couldn't leave no room for him for him to basically you know talk to the the squad right after or whatever and basically he was asking me to take him out you know then to do it right so you know me being a stupid uh, stupid follower to be sincere you know at this time not having you know that strong enough backbone to just say like nah chalice but wait you know let's uh i need this, to hear this from different people because uh at this time i knew for a fact you know that Artie and him were from the same gang even the one from the south side one from the east side it, it was just basically a set trip you know now at this time uh old man from ontario was there which uh later on after this happened you know he told me i should have i should have got it at him in regards to this you know but i didn't you know it was me so i just said no uh, simon i'll take care of it so this is right before my birthday you know so we were cooking up a batch and uh, you know we wanted uh, at least to jog a couple and uh, you know this is for the youngsters and uh, i hope you pay attention how how it works in prison how even those that you think are close to you they're quick to deal with you you know over nothing how there's no loyalty and uh, I'm telling you this because, you know, I was that individual that was scandalous. So, basically, we did the Pruno, you know. I knew the personal stuff he was going through, you know. He was going through as a person. Again, you know, it was, uh, Man, it, it was just scandalous of my part, to be sincere, because I, I dissected w what he shared with me, you know, as a personal life, in his personal life, what he was feeling through it, you know. This was a man that I, I used to wake up sometimes at night, and from the pain, I used to bold up, and he used to stay up with me, you know, basically encouraging me and you know, how to keep going. You know, it, I have no words to say uh, what type of individual I am for this. But what ended up happening was, uh, you know, I, I strained the, the pruno. I got four cuffs for him, four for me. You know, it was some strong, strong stuff that we've been, we've been cooking for a while, you know. Since that trust was there, you know, I, uh, I made sure I threw, I threw some remorons in this. So when I did this, you know, he drank, he drank, and uh, he eventually passed out. So I did, you know, I went back and I, I braided up a sheet and, 
And I put it over his neck till I felt he was gone. Now he didn't resist. He didn't put up any type of fight, you know. So what I did after was uh, I braided up some more things. I put it on the vent, and I just, you know, I pulled them up, man. And for those that are aware how Corkton looks, you know, there's the bunks are side by side concrete. So there's a bunk right in front of the door and you know it, it it stung it really stung you know that this individual and uh, what I had done you know so I sat there you know I drank you know I don't know what time and I just passed out I passed out and the next thing that I remember was them at the door hitting the alarm and you know they took us out and I, all I said was you know we drank and I passed out and that's it you know which you know they took they took me to court trying to find trying to pin it on me and uh, eventually it got thrown out you know it got ruled a, a suit because of the personal things he was putting out on uh, on his mail and uh, since he was a main member, you know, all his mail was being screened, so they knew they were aware exactly of the things he was going through. So, but even though, you know, the DA couldn't pin it on me, you know, CDC is a different story. So from there, they, you know, they basically put me on walk alone and, you know, they put me off for transfer. It is exactly how I ended up healing hitting Pelican Bay. I hit it under this suspicion of a 187. And now this episode I want or this recording I wanna I wanna address the youngsters, you know. I hope you guys can really see what I'm trying to to speak of right here. Cause I'm gonna tell you guys straight up you know, this is something that tore me up, man, and still tears me up. The only reason I, I'm even speaking about this right now is because uh, I think it's important for one to be sincere with everyone that that has been supporting, that that has had kind words for me, and for two, for those that are thinking of, of of going to prison or and thinking that there's loyalty inside man there's no loyalty you know in reality I already wanted him removed cause uh he was jealous man he was jealous that that he was there and uh, he wanted to be the only vato from King Cobras you know or at, at least you know in that building because uh, to be sincere, uh, homeboy wasn't even doing nothing no more, you know. But he was still functioning with the program and everything. He just, he had other things to worry about, you know, as a lifer. And you're sitting back there and you start seeing the world, the world that, that you hold treasure. Because just because you're in prison don't mean you stop caring, you know. It start disappearing or starts fading out and you know you start stressing on it you know but I can sincerely tell you man this tore me up and not to sound like a coward to every one of you but you know when I went through chemotherapy it was something painful real painful you know I used to bold up and and wanting to cry, wanting to cry, but I kept holding on to that stupid, stupid thought of manhood that man don't cry, we put up and, but uh, I'll be honest with you, with uh, you know, with uh, with Ruben, with, with a senor that I did this to, man, I hit Corcoran and uh, I got a letter from uh, 
from his jefita and his carnalas to asking me, you know, what had happened, what he had said the, the last day we spoke. You know, I, I never answered him. And I didn't answer him not because they didn't deserve it or not because I didn't want to. Because I was a coward. What was I going to tell him? You know, you always send me godly things. You came up to visit me. You were always checking in on me. You know, and you know, so up in Pelican Bay, hell yeah, there was a couple of nights that I belt, I bawled, I cried like a little kid behind this because I knew it was wrong. And it was just one of those times that I actually sat down and and really spoke to myself, you know, up there and, uh, and told myself, you know, bitch pendejo, what are you doing? This ain't the causa, this ain't the movement, this, you know, what are you doing? And in reality, what are we doing when things like this happen? I mean, I want those that are out there still thinking that that prison's cool, that there's a, that's where you truly meet camaradas, that's where you truly see the meaning of, of you know, campoleros, sureños, and nah, chales. There's no type of, of love, you know, for, for nobody inside. It's sincere, you know. You mess up, you pay, and sometimes you don't even mess up. But Atacato's thinking, he starts getting in his head that uh, that don't feel mentality towards another individual, and basically, you're done. But for those youngsters, man, just really pay attention. This man didn't have nothing coming. He was still following program. He had been following program for decades. Never did nothing wrong. And it was a CCS, you know. He's not keeping it active, so I think he's taking, he's, take, he's just taking space from a good camarada, so go ahead and handle that. But make sure he don't walk out that cell to speak with the goon squad. Now I know, you know. I could sit here and say, oh, Artie's is, or the organization's is, and there's going to be many of you to say, but you were the scandalous one. You took care of it. And you're right. I am. You know? And I ain't on here to try to tell you that, you know, I'm la madre Teresa de Cancuta and that uh, I was an angel. Nah. I completely blame myself just as much as I blame them. And there's no around it, you know. And I understand if a lot of people fall off from hearing my stories. I just wanted to keep it sincere. Again, this right here ain't easy for me to talk about. Because as I'm speaking to you, it's touching a nerve. I don't want to speak about it. Especially now, you know, that I find a high power and I'm trying to maintain. And I'm trying to make means for my wrongs and... You know, I, I'm at that stage where I don't know if it's going to be next week or, you know, I'm just trying. So I attempt to avoid this type of uh, actions I did in my life. But I shouldn't. So, again, this is for those that need this inner look on how prison or issues in prisons get dealt amongst Amongst gente, amongst camaradas, amongst campoleros, and those that who, there's a lot of people that worship as gods, you know, as, le as legends. <laughs> but man, again, this touches a big nerve on me, so I will come back and continue uh, on my story on on how when I hit Pelican Bay. I just thought I wanted to share this with you and uh, again I'm not trying to go or glorify this at all this uh 
this episode in my life, you know. I'm not. I know I'm trash. I'm the worst that could be, you know, for even speaking about it years later. But, you know, if I'm trying to be sincere and, you know, it's important. You know, if I, uh, it was a, a terrible action I did. But I think for me putting it out there, I, I could start working it with my higher power to the sense, you know, to try to make it right, which I will never be able to. I understand that. But with this said, I won't take much of you guys' time today. As always, please stay loyal to yourself and always value your family. I hope everybody continues having a good afternoon. Gracias.